Now, I wonder if Vision, in the same way that Ultron could hide his consciousness in the internet and just copy himself in the internet somewhere and then transfer that consciousness to some other body as he does throughout Age of Ultron. I wonder if Vision has that same kind of... That would be an if, interesting way to get Vision back without having right. to break any of the continuity that we know of, or yeah. time travel. Ew, here we go. Welcome Damn. to the ITE podcast. Is it where we discuss the Wanda Vision in detail? Yeah. Assuming we remember. Watched it two days ago. A lot has happened since then in life, so I don't know. You're blanking out too. I would have watched it again. I figured you oh, had no, this no. one. No, I didn't know enough about it to talk about it, but I didn't go researching into the hours of the night or anything like that. All so. Right. Yeah, what did you think overall then of one? Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought I think this is a pretty big swing for Marvel. This is their very first Disney Plus show, and they're going to have just like the weirdest show. Like in all honesty, they probably should have started with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They should have started with that one because that w- that's probably going to be a little bit more just like superhero streamlined. Yeah. Exactly, where this is going to be trippy and weird and all things that I like. Yeah, I think it's going to be like 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 really awkward moments. Let's dive into them and live in them for a minute. But I don't know. That's like the very first thing you want to do with a Disney Plus series. My overall take on the show is (laughs) slow burn. That's the only word I have for it. I feel like it's just going to be a slow burn and we're going to get some really good stuff. And it's going to make you think about things differently. And you're going to see a lot of callbacks to a lot of the films and not what you would expect from Marvel. And hopefully it it works out and people stick around. That's the only thing. Like people's patience levels are so low. We see that with this show. Even our average view time on YouTube is like five minutes for an hour show. I think the having each episode framed with this like overlay of American TV, sitcom TV having that imprint on each episode is going to be a thing of I'm already intrigued on, okay, what's the, what's the, what's the first color episode going to look like? What TV show angle are they going to hit with this one? Cause this first episode's very much a, I love Lucy. Yep. Yeah. It's been kind of vibe. I believe it's been reported that the first one was based on, I love Lucy. And the second one was bewitched. Bewitched. Definitely bewitched. Uh, I wasn't sure from Dick Van Dyke because of the whole, like, when Vision carries Wanda through, like, into the home at the beginning and almost trips on the chair or the ottoman or whatever. I was like, oh, Dick Van Dyke show. But he just phases through it. That was was cute. That that first episode, there was just a lot of, oh, that's cute. Yeah. It it really, it's a giant leap from where Marvel has been. So it's just a completely different thing but there's Picture obviously the end of end game and then this is where we pick up i think we're I just gonna Lucy. get little tidbits of things it's it's like watching a like a mystery or a what is the thing it's like a yeah, live action definitely... escape room or something you're just mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out what what is going on what these pieces that you're seeing how do they fit mm-hmm. in the puzzle and then eventually yeah. i think it'll be explained and it'll all make sense and we'll get into a whole other realm of the marvel universe yeah, it's wild, man. It's wild. Do we want to dive deep into episode one? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Right. Let's do it. Yeah, like classic I Love Lucy setup. There's the heart on the calendar, and neither of them really remember what is important about that date. And then she thinks it's an anniversary. He finds out that his boss is coming over for dinner, and then hilarity ensues. But what's nice is we get the introduction of Catherine Hahn, who is just an American treasure. Let's be honest. Everything Catherine Hahn is in is good. She's always Um, funny. Yeah. Yeah. My my wife loves every, like every time I watch a show and and she comes on, she's so funny. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And Uh, like this whole episode just just really went hard on the, both of these went pretty hard on the uh, marriage comedy, which is uh, probably a different demographic for Marvel. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And see. So this leads me to my first prediction here, and that is Catherine Hahn is going to be a big deal. Because if Into the Spider-Verse taught me anything, it's at this point, Catherine Hahn is too big of, a, of an actor to be in just like supporting sidekick role. 
True. I don't know if it's she is somebody on the outside of this realm right. where things are happening, if she's just an impression from somebody else out there, or if she is inflicting some sort of stuff. If she is a villain. I don't know what, but she's going to be a big deal. Write it down. And Write we're seeing down. like between episodes so far, the characters continue into the next episode. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's obviously importance to each character and they serve a particular role. I'm sure right. we'll figure it out eventually. Also, but the house changed between episode one and two. So it, it is, is, is they went from I Love Lucy to Bewitched. So like everything changes except for the characters. I imagine we'll see new characters as well, but some of them get pulled along. So there's, there has to be a reason. For yeah. And I got the feels a little bit watching this oh, first yeah? one. Yeah. When I was a kid, I, we used to watch reruns of I Love Lucy with my mom. Mm. So that was like hitting me in the feels a little bit, bringing back yeah. some old memories, which is nice because I tend to I have a hard time remembering what happened to me. <laughs> like right. I, I forget. <laughs> I can't remember my childhood at all, like hard, like at all. And so it's nice. Like that kind of got triggered a little bit so I could remember. Yeah. That was nice. And then seeing the bewitched thing, that wasn't like an I Love Lucy or a Bewitched fan. I think we were both right. still too young for those things to be like major parts of our... Right. Our, it's like Nick at Night, if you happen upon it and there's nothing else going on, then sure. Exactly. Like it's on every once in a while and right. it's just in the background kind of thing usually, not a main reason to watch mm -hmm. television for us. So I, it'll get really interesting when it goes into the realm of the shows that we grew up on, you know? Definitely. Definitely. When I got braces in the eighth grade, I had braces from the end of eighth grade until after the summer after my freshman year of college. So five years of mm. braces. That's a and my time. orthodontist played I Love Lucy episodes in uh, his waiting room all day, every day. So you have terrible memories. <laughs> so I have terrible like my, yeah, my sense memory of I Love Lucy, not positive. That's brutal. No. Yeah. Good thing we moved right on to Bewitched and hopefully something a little more Bewitched modern. is pretty neutral for me. I remember it being on. I remember checking it out. In the nose really, twitch. But At first, I thought it was I Dream of Genie because I think I saw that more than Bewitched. I mean, they're essentially yeah. the same show. Yeah. So I think we should talk about how maybe how Wanda and her character and how it's changed a little bit since mm -hmm. we've been introduced to her because she was russian and now all of a sudden she has this she was very she was american she was sorry Sokovian. excuse me she was sokovian and now she has yes. this very uh, standard american dialect yeah her accent has really trailed off yeah really trailed off whatever this realm is, is that she's in mm -hmm. or if it's just in her mind or whatever it is i'm curious if it has an american influence even though they they hint it toward it being uh, what's his name what is that guy's name the guy Strucker. Strucker they hint that this whole thing is set up by Strucker uh, well are you referencing the commercial for the watch the commercial and the swords and I believe in the comics Strucker was the the leader of sword am I right oh, about this okay. I'm not even sure I think I this has know. something to do with that uh, we can google it two guys googling stuff two guys googling stuff the like logo that. was on the the notepad at the very end of the first episode by the person who's watching the television, who we don't know who that is yet. So it's not Strucker. So the beekeeper is okay. in the comics in sword and sword. We're not sure it may be the new shield. Yeah. I don't know where they fall in the shield Hydra spectrum of things. And then there's also indications that Strucker based on the commercials mm -hmm. has influence over this reality as well. Because that first commercial is for a Stark product. It's the Stark toaster. Oh. Yeah. And then the second commercial is Strucker. So you're going through, it seems to me like it's a timeline thing of the first outside force to really like mess with Wanda's life was the Stark bomb that killed her parents. So and then more like a memory thing for her. So I think, yeah, I think just we're just like pulling a giant like, coping mechanism from Wanda. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, can we talk about the creepiness of the choking scene? Bro. Oh, man. Stop, stop, stop it. it. Stop it. That man, the mom from that 70s show, yeah. she murdered that. I was like, this is too weird. This is going on forever. It was super long, weird. But I loved it. Add 30 more seconds. Do it. Oh, man. I don't know what so, any of it means. So I think it, her reality glitched out there for a second. And then when she mm -hmm. said vision... 
the way she talked to Vision there. What did she say? Vision, help him. Save him, help him. Yeah. yeah. She's one, she spoke directly to the camera when she said that. Mm. So her eyes went straight onto the camera, breaking the fourth wall a little bit, mm -hmm. and then talking to Vision to help him. And uh, that was uncharacteristic of what's been going on so far. It was that she had to tell Vision to do it, which mm -hmm. makes me wonder if Vision is even there at all. Obviously, because he's dead in the Marvel right. Universe, as we yeah. know. Yeah, I think at this point, it is her mind's version of Yeah, this of is Vision. all just some kind of mega coping mechanism or trance or yeah. something. Either she's in the Matrix on her own volition that she's created for herself, mm -hmm. or somebody else has imposed Their, the Matrix yeah. onto her, and she's okay with it. Yeah, and speaking of which, I think this is, when we get a little further along in the show, maybe we can talk about this, like how it relates to the way that reality works for people. Mm -hmm. The more I talk to people or see people express their opinions about things, the more I realize that everyone is just in their own bubble. You know what I mean? As far as like the way that we interpret reality in general, or it's easily seen in politics, how some people have a certain point of view and other people have another point of view when presented with almost identical facts. Somehow there's two sides to things. The spin but, machine. Yeah. But to them, it's actually true. Like the thing is true. Oh, and so right, like yeah. their reality is one thing because they believe it. And then another person's reality is a completely different thing because they believe it. And I think that well, we could get into some really interesting philosophical deep territory, maybe down the line here about those mm -hmm. kinds of things. In the meantime, we'll talk about episode two. <laughs> episode two. Yeah. Episode two was fun. The, I, just, I enjoyed the like bedroom noise scene. It was good and weird of just mm -hmm. like, all right, what is that noise? Is this a sign that reality is shaking in some way? Um, what's weird about that scene is I remember having those memories when I was a kid. That happened to me. So I was really identifying with that. I was like, oh, this is so weird because I remember when I was a kid, branches hitting the window and freaking mm -hmm. out. So I can really identify with that scene because that happened to me. And two, they're taking the they're taking the humor in a much more naughty direction with this show. Mm -hmm. This is a very adult show, and I don't think people oh, yeah. realize that like at all until we watched it. Lots of innuendo in this thing. Let's see highlights of the second episode. We get the introduction of what Geraldine is that her name? Who could potentially be Monica Rambo, the daughter, I the little girl in Captain Marvel, grown up. We'll see where her character, how she comes into play. She was one of the only people to like notice that things were off with the magic show. And uh, you get that weird neighborhood association. The th oh, the for the children. What? Oh, is... man. I think that might be some kind of truth drop. That is just weird. Um, yeah. There's something culty going on uh, there. And but... the, what is the other show? The one on HBO Max. His Dark Materials. His Dark Materials dives into that as well. So that... Man, that, that show is... His Dark Materials is basically like a don't trust adults show. Every adult in that show is terrible except for Lin-Manuel. Yeah. And uh, and the guy's father, the kid's father. I don't know. He didn't go back. Yeah. But yeah, he, I think he means well. Yeah, I think he means, I think he means well. Uh, but they, there was definitely like a certain, I feel like he, in the same way that Azrael's wrapped up in this whole, we got to bring down the authority thing. I feel like he's similarly wrapped up in that. But. That show is tackling some serious issues. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't watched it, make sure you watch his dark materials. It's going yeah. hard and deep. That's probably not now, the right reference. It's, Go, it's going hard on there. It's going hard and deep on some children's stuff. <laughs> and no, if yeah, you, it's one of those shows that we can only watch it like one episode at a time because it's, I just feel bad because all of these children are just being let down by every adult near them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a slow burn and it just makes you wonder. It just, it really makes you wonder. They're not pulling any punches. They're talking about, I think something akin to what's really going on and mm -hmm. it's scary. It's freaking yeah. scary, but, but also magic is real. So that's cool. And uncursing some words that we demon has always been thought of as a terrible thing. And then in this mm -hmm. case, they're at the actual like embodiment of their souls is it is a right. thing called a demon. So it gets really interesting, really changing up the way that we interpret words and reality itself. And I hope they keep making it. I'm nervous that they'll get to a certain point and stop making it like they did with Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. Yeah, I think they There's started. only one. I think they're basically following the books and there were only three books 
So I think they're going to do okay. a season three and then I think that'll be it. And yeah. That should wrap it all up. Yeah. Hopefully it wraps it all up. And yeah. I'm not sure why they, I don't know why they're telling the story. Like the people that are in charge are basically, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. I don't want to go to conspiracy on this, but it's to just, make money. It's strange that they're, they're actually telling this story. You know what I mean? If the rumors about children being abducted and who abducts them are true, why would those same people put out a story? Or maybe not the exact same people, but people nearly closely associated with those people put out a story like this. I don't know. I'm having a hard time following. I, I, I can't even. I think we might have to have. I think we might have to have a secret episode about this because it gets heavy and weird and t- into conspiracy land. And, right. Uh, Let's go back into WandaVision. All right. So I, I saw a fun meme the other day. I guess it had to be yesterday because... The show came out on Friday right. and today's Sunday, but there was the two things that can stop vision, Thanos and gum. But I loved the, the animation of, of the gum getting into his gears and just like turning him into, I don't know, just a yeah. completely wasted drunk of a person. It was great. Uh, yeah. Was and great. then also too, just the whole production of the show, they are using effects that look like the effects they would use back when the show yeah. was done. So like the really bad cut for like when her wedding ring popped on like mm-hmm. the, the bad edit and the the way that the the dishes were floating in the air looked really cheesy and and unrealistic yeah they're really leaning in on it yeah which is nice yeah it's, it's something totally different something we haven't seen i think it's going to test a lot of people's patience i don't know mm-hmm. if pe- most people have the patience to go past this because it's like obviously going to be a slow burn i think People will either abandon it or they'll come back after it's done to watch all of it. Yeah, maybe when it's you don't have to wait a week yeah. to get the next one. I could see it being a little bit more bingy because I know as soon as the first one ended, I was ready to start the second one. I was all in because I want to know what's going on with the major story. But at the same time, the stuff that's happening in between that's really that sitcom stuff, really, it, it keeps my attention enough. And another thing that's interesting is that depending on how they tackle this realm we're in, this reality, Mm -hmm. this could reset the Marvel Universe as a whole. They could theoretically bring Vision back for real. Her powers are beyond strong. Yeah. What's interesting is her power comes from the Mind Stone. Her yeah, power does, or I thought Vision's power comes from both because the Mind Stone is what Strucker was experimenting on. So he used because it was still in the Scepter, but that's he used the Scepter to create her, Wanda and okay. her brother. So th- the fact that they're both of the Mind Stone, I think, lends it to the idea of like, where it could be. Also, in Endgame, they stole the Mind Stone from the Scepter after the battle for New York, and then Captain America takes it back. So, in theory, the Mind Stones should be somewhere now? It should be back wherever it was originally in the timeline. Or maybe their timeline is now so jacked up that, because it's, I don't know, the Back to the Future rules. So I don't know if I don't know if the Mind Stone is available and if they can recreate Vision or if she can recreate Vision without the Mind Stone. I don't know. I don't know. Let me get this straight. The all the stones have been destroyed because of Thanos. Correct. So in their timeline. So the only So them option, taking those back, yeah. I don't think I don't the think only option would. would be like when Cap went back if something got wonky and he didn't get that one back correctly. So Mind Stone wise, I think I think it's gone. I think it's just... Mm -hmm. Now, what you could get is, in the multiverse, another vision in one of the other universes. They cleaned up the universes pretty well, I think, with the way they explained it. By having to go back and put them back, there's really only one timeline, for the most part. Gotcha. They corrected it. I'm sure there's some minor things that may have splintered, but like overall, the main things are the same. Yeah, we'll also see where Doctor Strange 2 goes. I think that might have something to do with it, or that's what we could be leading up to, since Wanda's in yeah, Doctor and there's, Strange you know, Multiverse of Madness. Who else can time travel? Is there more than one, or is it just, it's just Ant-Man? Is there another Ant-Man coming out? Uh, yes, there's Ant-Man in the Quantum Realm is coming out, or Ant-Man in the Wasp and the Quantum something, Quantum Mania or something like that okay so there's more time travel coming up i think there's gonna be like full-blown like multiverse time travel craziness between dr strange and ant man okay yeah so really anything is at play and the mind stone could come back into play or you could just get other universe 
vision show up. I don't know. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, so the fun, weird parts in episode two. The glitchy radio with the uh, oh my gosh Wanda, who's doing this to you? Uh, are you there? Are, are you there? Oh man, who's that guy? It's like somebody else. It's somebody talking from outside, and somehow right. audio is getting in. Right. You know. But if they're talking from the outside and they don't see what's going on, it gets weird. And I'm sure they'll explain it. But it's oh yeah. Is that person right there next to Wanda? Is that person just seeing mm-hmm. a vision? Of Wanda. Are they trying to tap into the Matrix signal? Right. Is it like a Cerebro Right. Thing? Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. And then there's the beekeeper situation at the end, where the beekeeper comes out of the manhole. I'm curious what the beekeeper's powers are. Let's look that up. Yeah. Beekeeper powers. What abilities? What is the role? This is in Mar. I should probably put Marvel in there. Beekeepers can keep bees alive for almost fifteen years. I don't know. <sighs> Advanced idea mechanics is oh aim aim. That's uh that's from Iron Man three. Not AOL Instant Messenger. Not AOL Instant Messenger. What was your Instant Messenger name? Jam and Jake. <laughs> I remember that. I I tried to recover it a, a few years ago. I wasn't able. Was yeah, like, I think I logged in at one point and I was like, "Yeah, no, you can't." I was Tito four two three. That's right. Yeah, I remember that. We'll get to the bottom of this. Oh, okay. So aim is advanced idea mechanics from Earth six hundred and sixteen. Okay. It is a privately funded think tank or organization of a group of brilliant scientists whose sole dedication is to acquire and develop power through technological means. Yep. Their goal is to use this power to overthrow the governments of the world. They supply okay. arms and technology to radicals and subversive organ- organizations in order to foster a violent technological revolution of society while making a profit. So they're just like a terror type organization. Yeah. Or something. Killian Aldrich. And the extremists from Iron Man 3. What's his name? The dude from Memento. The you interesting the thing. Oh, I, his name's Guy. Guy Pierce. Oh, he right? was in Iron Man 3? Yep. Fantastic movie. If you haven't seen Memento. Oh, then, gosh. Memento's amazing. It might test your patience, but it's worth it. Riveting. So the, I think the important thing here is that it comes from Earth 616. Yeah. Again, multiverse, man. Multiverse. Oh, we're, yeah, going we're going like all... multiple Earths, multiple universes. I think that's where we're headed yeah. in the grander scheme of things. Didn't they announce Captain America's back or something? Uh, that might have been a rumor. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's... I saw that, but then Chris Evans tweeted like news to me. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. And even Tony Stark could come back. Everybody could come back. Nobody dies, I guess. So we could see anything. We could see Thanos mm-hmm. again. Who knows? Oh, absolutely. Speaking of Thanos, I rewatched all of the movies that Wanda was in before this. Ooh. And Tell me about that. I really I really understood where Thanos was coming from a little more this time on the watch through. Yep. Having his planet destroyed that way, it really made a little more sense to me, like why he was so adamant about this. Yeah, dude's got some trauma, and he probably should have gone and seen a therapist or something mm-hmm. to work all that out. Instead, he's decided to go with mass genocide. And also, <laughs> too, he may not be wrong. That's the, the kicker. Oh, as far as the resources and mm-hmm. all that kind of business? Yeah. Yeah, there's something to be said for don't don't strip it all away. But murdering people to make that happen, also not great. There's better ways. Use that energy a little bit more productively. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there are better, there are easier ways to do it. Yeah. There's easier ways than killing exactly one half of all species. Yeah, you could just cull them a little bit with a, a virus created in a lab, for instance. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's re. For all of you listening on the podcast, I'm I'm doing a, a fishing mime. I went too far. Let's just uh, we'll get back to we'll get back to the one division. Can we talk about the the rewind? We haven't talked about that yet. I just kicked over my garbage can. The rewind? Yeah, where she says no. When she sees the beekeeper, says no, and then rewinds the whole world back or the TV show back. I don't think I even, I remember now, but I didn't register like how important that might be. (laughs) Yeah. So, cause I spent one and what, nine tenths of the episodes thinking that this was some external thing done to Wanda to keep her in this like stasis or whatever, or figure out something in a very matrixy kind of way. But then when she says no and exerts like a certain amount of control over the situation, 
then is this prison of her own making? Yeah, kind of like a, a, a coping mechanism for the tragedy that's happened to her. Yeah, exactly. So that's on one hand, you've got the radio where it's saying, who's doing this to you? But then on the other hand, she's saying no. And Bird maybe time. she's just, like, hey, this is beneficial to me because I'm happy and I'm with vision. Yeah. So I don't care if this is some external force because I get to live this life that I couldn't have otherwise lived. But even if it is that, if it is this external force that's created the matrix, then she can still exert that level of power over it shows she's, is she the most powerful Avenger? Either it's she... between her and Captain Marvel and maybe the Hulk. Yeah. Uh, it, this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with reality bubbles, how everybody lives in their own bubble of reality mm -hmm. and maybe everyone has this power is where I'm coming from. But mm -hmm. in the Marvel universe, maybe it is just her. Maybe she's the only one that has this power. Maybe she is just like a god, so to speak. Mm. She could basically do anything she wants. In the comics, there's this whole House of M storyline. I don't know how familiar you are. No. What, but tell me about this. Basically, something happens, and I don't remember what triggers it, but she gets real mad and basically says, no more mutants. Mm. And all, like, all mutants are gone. Life goes to like a normal place where there are no mutants. Like all these people are still alive. Like Wolverine exists, but he's Logan and he doesn't have right. metal healing knives powers. coming out of his hands. And then that goes on for a while. I don't know much else about the story, but she has the power to completely change reality, which is odd because her powers do not come from the reality stone. It's something to take into account is also Loki staff itself probably had some magic associated with it as well and also right. the story in the comic is probably different she probably has a and her form. powers in the comic come from like she also like lived on a mountain or was born was raised on a mountain she's magneto's kid maybe there's some like it's totally different yeah there's a whole lot else going on there but i think in the comics it's pretty established that aside from maybe the phoenix force she is the most powerful by a crazy lot yeah which Leads us to where in the world are we going? If everything is off, if everything is on the table, what's <laughs> yeah. next? Are we going to see shows that are just in one reality? Oh, this is the reality where Captain Marvel came back, and this is the reality mm -hmm. where Iron Man didn't go, didn't die, and this is the reality. Are we going to start seeing that? I think we're going to see that some of that with the whole What If series. I, okay, so um, they can compartmentalize so think, that story in the What Ifs, then mm -hmm. uh, multiple realities or yeah. whatnot. But as far as like how the Loki show works and if they ever tie that into any other characters, I feel like that is an alternate timeline universe yeah. now. Didn't he die like three times or something? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he died. He faked his death in Thor 2 and then like legit died in Infinity War. How did he die? In Thanos just killed him. Is that what happened? Yeah. He yeah. strangled him, broke his neck. But can you kill a god? Like, isn't that... Hasn't that been? The I don't think he's. They use the term God pretty loosely with the Asgardians. Plus, he was from originally like a monster. Oh, it? yeah. Plus, he was he was actually from. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. I keep wanting to say Isengard, and then that's wrong. He was a frost giant from Jotunheim. Yes. And then he just changed his image to human. So, frost giants, probably not immortal. He was a runt of a frost giant, I think is how they put it in the movie. I see. So, that's why he's like normal human height. And wait. No, but they showed him as one, right? Like when he was like blue or whatever. Yeah, they showed him as blue. And I don't know how they got around that. But he's not eight feet tall like the other Frost Giants. If he is the god of mischief, supposedly, mm -hmm. also. So that's interesting that he's a Frost Giant and then also he's the god of mischief. So. Yeah, I think that's just like a, a more title. of a title. Because then he, as the movies show, it's Thor really latches on to Odin. And Frigga teaches Loki kind of her witch in ways. And that's how he's able to do his magic stuff. Speaking of magic stuff, we should talk about the, what well, we did talk about a little bit, the, the funny drunk vision scene. Yeah. Yeah. The, the magic show. show. I love how yeah. they rehearsed it one way and then did the show and it came out like a totally different. Oh, absolutely. Different version of that. And Wanda just constantly having to use her power to fix Whatever it was. Yeah. I love that, like, Drunk Vision was just like, oh, yeah? Check this out. I can fly. 
And oh, right. here's the strings. And, and it, it reminds me like how gullible people were. It seems like people were more gullible farther back. Like mm-hmm. when I was younger, I was definitely more gullible. And people would say maybe that's just because you were younger, but I feel like people in general were more gullible not that long ago. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking in terms of a magic show in 1970 versus a magic show now. Like, yeah, I, I mean, do you remember that. the the David Copperfield series right. on TV? We all thought those were like legit illusions. And it turns out mm-hmm. like all those big things that he did were basically just camera edits. Yeah, like smoke and mirrors. No, like literal, like we just shot it separate. Oh, like oh, totally okay. camera edits, like not even smoke and mirror. Like he just got to a point where he couldn't do a bigger thing without just making a film essentially that's what happened with right. that, that whole bermuda island thing like that you can see where the sun is in different places and stuff like that was shot over mm. time and mm. trying they tried to pass it off as real time gotcha yes and I, I yeah i remember like previews for the david copperfield like we're gonna make the statue of liberty disappear mm-hmm. kind of stuff but i don't remember actually ever watching one yeah. me and my wife went back and watched it not too long ago yeah it brings back memories i, I used to watch that I was into magic. I actually knew some magic. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. You were doing I, some I was like, in, sleight of hand stuff? Yeah, I was in the Louisville Magic Club. Word. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I won the uh, the young sleight of hand tournament one year. It's funny what? because- it's Because now you deal cards? That's what's funny is, is I've lost- Is that going to get you kicked out? I never, <laughs> ever spoke of this. But also, I've lost that dexterity in my hand, so I can't do it. Gotcha. Like, it's like when you're a kid, it's easier to learn new things and like put your hand yeah, in weird. All shape. of this is all rubbery. Yeah, you yeah. can put it in whatever position. And now as an adult, it's like I de- I dealt cards for a little while and I couldn't do it. Like I it's too <laughs> clunky. Like my hands just they don't work like they used to. Now, if you went into work and pulled out the next deck of cards and you were like, Hey, just before we get started, let me just do and have all and do all this crazy like sleight of hand stuff. Would some like casino, would some security agent just come tackle you? Or would it just be like, yeah, you can't do that. Here's your write up. Yeah. It would be more like if you're sitting there on a table, like this happened when I dealt the WSOP, the world series, world World series of poker, they take an hour and 45 minute lunch break. Mm. So you just sit at the table and it's just you and a deck of cards. So if you were to, for instance, play solitaire, somebody would come over and be like, no, (laughs) <laughs> like you would get in trouble, like pretty, do not pretty touch much those. immediately. So I imagine it would be a similar thing. Now, if, if a gaming commission got involved, it could be a nightmare. Do you have to get certified by the gaming commission to like deal? Yeah. You have to really? get approved. It's like a whole government review background check. Wow. It's, it's creepy. So if you just pulled out a Sharpie and just, <laughs> just start like putting dots on cards, how quickly would it take for you to be out of there? Yeah. So I knew of a guy who stole a card. It's like he just took one a card. card. One card from a deck. He was not allowed in any casino ever. Banned from all casinos, basically. And wow. I'm not sure if they prosecuted, but they might have prosecuted him for something. And that's... So tampering with things in a casino, what people don't realize is that they have the same laws as banks. So if, mm. you, if you do something in a casino that you couldn't do in a bank, you'd be prosecuted to that extent. Dang. So if you picked up a $10 bill off the ground, you just found it. And walked mm-hmm. out with it, you would actually be stealing ten dollars from a bank, which Dang. is a big no no. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna do anything sketchy in a casino. Nice. Good tip. Yeah. I did get a deck of cards from somebody who worked at a casino, but they had a hole punched. Yeah, those are the old blackjack cards. So nothing nefarious there. But like stealing a fresh poker card, that's not a good idea. Now what would be the difference between a poker card and a blackjack card? Is there? Well, here's the difference. The difference is like poker cards are more bendy, like they're higher quality cards. So you can bend a poker card and it will go back. If you bend a blackjack card, it will have a crease in it and you you won't be able to use it. Interesting. Yeah. And that's so that you can shield your cards better with the poker card? Yeah. yeah. Bend them up to look at them like on the table, hide them behind your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is some serious inside baseball. Yeah. This will probably all get cut out. But, you know, what are we talking about, man? (laughs) What kind of podcast is this? Who knows? Oh, you know what we should do? We should talk about music. Yeah. Yeah. We got a, we got a, we got a song on the Spotify. Song on the Spotify or Apple. What is it? So what happened here? iTunes went. Used to be iTunes and now they just call it Apple Music Mm -hmm. because they want you to subscribe. They want you to pay. They want you to cancel your Spotify and use apple music yeah 
I feel like they had, you know, such good branding with iTunes. And yeah, I don't amazing. know why they just threw out the name. They should have just kept the name and morphed the platform, no? It was iTunes, and then they had the App Store, and then they changed it to... Is it still the App Store, or they changed the branding on that, too? Is that what it was? Yeah, it used to be iTunes Store, and now it's the App Store. Okay, well, that makes sense. But changing iTunes, I don't know why they would... Yeah. Oh, it's just called Music now. It's not called Apple Music. It's just called Music. Five funny. minutes with Ben. Hey, how are you guys doing? Go ahead, say it out loud. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay. It's been a bit of a week, but we're going to get through it. You and I, all of us, together. Good times. Good times. Just waiting on Jacob. Just waiting on Jacob to come back. We'll get back eventually, and we'll get back into it. But for now, we're just waiting, and that's okay. Yeah, everybody, you know what? Just take a deep breath in with me. Here we go. Three, two, one. Inhale. Just let it sit. And exhale. You feel that? You're alive. That's pretty great. Let's all breathe together one more time. Here we go. Three, two, one. And exhale. Feels good. Feels good. Man, I tell you what. I order from Domino's pizza when I want the, like, shitty pizza. If I want good pizza, I'm going to order a good pizza. But sometimes you just want filler pizza. You want quantity over quality. And when that is the case, Domino's is my go-to. Because I can get... More than likely, a medium pizza for $5.99, plus some cheesy bread for $5.99, and then maybe even that brownie chocolate chip cookie dessert thing for $5.99. And that's a pretty pretty rad coupon, and it's always available. That's my Domino's go-to order. Sometimes I'll add some wings if I'm feeling like I'm just going all in. Sometimes I'll get a two liter of Coke if I don't have anything at home. Let me tell you, every time I order from Domino's, they're like, do you want to sign up? Or do you want to continue as a guest? And every time I continue as a guest. But they have my email. No one is more, what's the word? Aggressive? Not aggressive. Aggressive is too aggressive. Nobody is more ever present in my email as Domino's Pizza. Every single day, Domino's wants me to buy pizza. And that's just not my life, Domino's. I'm not there. One, that's a lot of heartburn I'd be introducing into my life. I can really only do that about once a month, tops. Plus, if I'm eating pizza more than once a month, I'm going to get a good pizza, like a quality, an Impala Zeri's if you're from the Louisville area. Oh, and since we're on the topic of pizza, let's talk about deep dish Chicago style for a second. I have both lived in Chicago and New York, and I'm going to say something controversial here. I think I like Chicago style more. Did I mean that? I don't know. I don't know. I have to be in a mood. I have to be in a mood. What I like is a, a crust solid enough to fit all of the toppings that I need. And Chicago style just doesn't have that all the time. It just doesn't have it. So you get It gets too soupy. You try to pick it up. You have to eat it with a fork and a knife. You just have to. But the crust is good. Like that cornmeal situation, it, it, it does add a level of enhancement. Is it still pizza? I don't know. Do I enjoy it? Yes. New York style, you get that like brick oven kind of vibe, even if it's from just a shitty corner bodega kind of thing. And it's greasy as all get out. And so you got to know where your restrooms are for the rest of the day, or at least for the most immediate hour and a half after you eat it, because you, you got to be safe. You don't want to be stuck on the Q train crossing you know, the Manhattan Bridge and have a pizza grease emergency. You got to plan this out. I guess what it comes down to is if I'm going to eat a nicer pizza, I would, I'll still take an Impala Zeri's Louisville style pizza over Chicago or New York style. Detroit, Michigan, they got the square pizza there. I do like the square pizza. It's pretty nice. Jacob, are you back? Yeah. Sweet. I had to mute my mic. I'm just cracking up. <laughs> how much of that did you get? How, oh, how much oh, were you there for? Oh, the pizza at the end. Oh, okay. We did some nice breathing. A little bit of meditative. Okay. Just like, hey, let's just breathe together. Let's ha let's share a moment, listeners. Just take that deep breath in. Let's sit for a second. Breathe with me, Jacob. And exhale. Let's do an ASMR type episode. I don't know enough about ASMR. <laughs> Off the rails. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Ooh, this train is gone. Oh man, I'm on my like fourth cup of coffee right now. I'm mm. so pumped. I'm ready for the I'm podcast. Drinking, Are you ready? I'm drinking, um, drinking Nate's coffee out of Lexington, Kentucky. 
It's mm-hmm. pretty rad. This is a lighter roast. It's called Wake Yo Ass Up. Nice. It's pretty good. This is uh, more Hawaiian coffee. Oh, that Kona. I'm not sure if it's actually Kona. Okay. I don't know what makes it Kona. Oh, I have no idea. This is I definitely just all Hawaiian. Coffee that's what I Kona. thought. And then I looked on the label and there's no Kona. It's called, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's, uh, it's still really good. Sweet. Um, yeah. It's really good. I'll have to do some research into what actually makes it Kona. Ray, hey, you know what? Way. If listener, watcher of the YouTube. Yeah. Leave a comment. comment. Leave that comment. Tell us about Kona. Don't make us Google it ourselves. Why do our own research when you already know the answer? Set us straight. Speaking of which, you think we should have a guest? I feel like we should have a guest on our show. Sure. Yeah, let's have a guest. Yeah. If you want to be a guest on our show. If you want to be a guest. Leave a smash comment. Smash that comment button. Leave a comment. Say, hey, I want to be on your podcast. Yeah. And we'll get you in. We'll get you in. Maybe. It's a, yeah. yeah. There's Unless, a, a review process. Right. Yeah. There's a strict, Background check. Yeah. Can you deal cards? You can't be on our podcast. Do you know magic tricks? Yes. Do you know magic tricks? Man, I wonder what's up with Zoom magic? Anybody doing Zoom magic right now? That should be a thing. That would be fun. Yeah. Like a yeah. lot, li- like a Zoom live magic show. Right. Just all up close. Yeah. Yeah. If only I had my dexterity. All gone. All gone. Yeah. I don't know. Any other thoughts on WandaVision? Oh, wait. Your rewatch of all of the Wanda and Vision movies. Mm-hmm. So you watched Age of Ultron. Yes. Civil I, War. Yeah. And then the last two, Infinity War mm-hmm. and Endgame. Yeah, I really enjoyed Age of Ultron a little more this time. I originally It gets better the more you watch it. Yeah, originally I was just so turned off by the animation looking a little cartoony. It really bothered me. But this time around, I just went with it and didn't care as much. And the story was great. And yeah. James Spader's voice, man. He, like, it, yeah. There are four voices that to me are legendary. Okay. One is Morgan Freeman, obviously. Definitely. He, Hands he, down. Number one, God. My friend Andy Dufresne. Two, the guy that played, he's in his Dark Materials, and he also played Moriarty in... Oh, Andrew Scott. Holy sh... His voice. That guy is intense. He is an intense fella. It's, he's so good. It's Did so, Fleabag? I've seen like an episode. I didn't realize... He he's did. in the second season of Fleabag. It's great. His he voice. is fantastic. He's so captivating. He's the most... Oh my gosh. I can't take my eyes off of him when he's in a scene in his dark materials. I'm like, oh, just say a word. But it's, oh, yeah. It's just, it's Riveting. incredible. Ah. And it just resonates like in his whole you know, body, but it's, right. I don't know what it is, man. It's just something about his voice. Oh yeah. It's his voice, his eyes, his demeanor. It's everything. He was in what? Spectre? The um, James Bond movie? He and he has this like very like middle of the road kind of character. <laughs> and it's, you can't have that guy be like. It's the regular dude. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit more than that. He's, yeah, he has too much gravitas. Agreed. Two more. Yeah. Two more. Keeper Sutherland. Ooh. Keeper's voice has the Jack same thing Bar- where it just, it resonates. It like resonates everywhere. And so even mm-hmm. if he's being quiet, it feels like it has the strength behind it. It just. His intense yelling in 24 is just I, chef's kiss. I was a huge 24 fan and like going back and looking at, at it now, it just looks like a bunch of garbage to make us all afraid of the certain demographic of people, but man, Kiefer on screen, he just captivates you. And then, and I feel like he's redeemed that role by, by his new role in designated survivor. Did you see this? No, I didn't. Man, he plays the president. But he's secretary of some something Housing inconsequential. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's the HUD guy. Oh, yeah. Accidental president. Yeah. Yeah, like everyone is murdered and there's nobody to become president. He's the, like the last on the list and he's amazing. So captivating his voice. And the final one, the fourth yeah. one is James Bader. Yeah, his voice. Gotcha. It's not always captivating, but something about him. And That's what I loved about his run on The Office. They really tapped into him just being like a mesmerizing, weird dude. Yeah, there's just something about him. And it's, yeah. it's, you know what's interesting, I think, about people's voices is the longer they take to say a word, the more mesmerizing and captivating they are. And I think that's something that Morgan Freeman does and Andrew Scott. They yeah. take a long time to get to the next word. There's a confidence there. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly yeah, deliberate. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And yeah, that takes me, that takes us back to the concept of 
this trance that you were putting everyone in a minute. You were speaking very slow, very deliberate. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, my mind was warped a little bit. But we were in so uh, we were in Ben Vision for a minute. That's right. So what about Civil War? I understood it a lot more this time mm -hmm. around. The not signing the the documents and the government intervention, and I understood where Cap was coming from. I understood both sides of this a little bit. Yeah, more. It really sank <laughs> in. Whereas before, I d it didn't sink in. Like it just. Yeah. It was just like a dumb excuse to have a a fight and right. whatever some like manufactured con conflict yeah them. whatever reason it just really sank in a little more maybe it's because of the divide we've seen with people and the way that they're fighting or not fighting or the political divide and seeing how people's minds are in two totally different places and just being able to zoom out from that a little bit and then mm. see how it affected these characters that we know and love yeah the, i remember watching it maybe the second time when it had come out on like blu-ray or whatever and after watching it, or maybe in the middle of it, all the scenes where they're debating the pros and cons of signing the accords, I was like, I like this part of the movie. And this is, they're having like real, real conversations about the merits of this and how it can go like, and everybody's coming from it, you know, coming at it from like their point of view, but, but they're all making like solid arguments yeah. and it sounds like they're listening to each other and that's great. And, and I think that's, the maybe that's a, a frustration of our current environment to where it's like oh look at these people like having a conversation and maybe affecting each other in certain ways the fact that it ultimately resorts to violence isn't great oh. but just having a, a nice policy debate they didn't fight outright to start with so mm -hmm. maybe that's maybe our current climate is why i enjoyed that part so much because at the time, they could all still be friends. Yeah. Yeah. On the rewatch, I think it had a lot to do with it. And this also is part of why our band is called Dual Paradigm, I think. Mm -hmm. It's like we, we were able to zoom out a little bit. Yeah. Between the two of us, I think just individually, mm -hmm. you can see the merits of both sides. Yeah. Even though one side may say it's the other side's ridiculous and the other side says the other side is ridiculous. There are some arguments that seem fair. Some of them. I just sides. don't want to lose sight of the humanity. Yeah. Yeah. We're all you know, people. Like. Yeah. If we can all not lose sight of that and realize that we don't need to be enemies, yeah, we can disagree. It's okay to disagree, 100%. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a different perspective. It's okay. You know, that's the whole point. That's what freedom is. is you can have a different perspective from me, and it's okay. Right. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And if that starts getting taken away, then that's what gets taken away. And maybe we should pay more attention to that. And then, and also zooming out and looking at, like, in what ways are you and I free in ways that other people are not and how do we reconcile with that yeah and are we are we all in the same kind of a dumpster fire boat of having to pay our bills and struggle we all have struggles definitely mm -hmm. they're different maybe oh, this definitely. goes back to maybe what i'm trying to say is everybody's reality is individual it's not a collective everyone experiences life differently mm -hmm. and i think having respect for that like on, on an individual basis of respecting people is about how do you behave you know, around people how do you treat people people that you actually yeah. talk to not just what you post on twitter how do you really interact with the reality that is around you am i wrong here did i get to two that was all great so infinity war how'd you feel about <laughs> infinity war <laughs> go deep and zip the any oh. war rewind that infinity war i just think like everybody's everybody's journey is different right so you want to you want to be able to factor in those differences and yeah like we may have struggled in certain ways. Our struggle is going to be completely different or not completely different, but like our struggles are going to be similar in some ways and wildly different in our experiences with certain groups of people or systems or just normal experiences where, or what you and I would call normal experiences have different repercussions for other types of people. So just being aware that that's a thing. I, I think having to incorporate what other people think constantly into your own conversation into your own reality can mess things up in a way like both ways if i'm not oppressed and i'm always taking into consideration the oppressed in all of my decision making that weakens the power that i have as an individual to live life the way that i want to live it and if i am oppressed and i'm always taking into consideration the powers that be then that's no way to live your life you know what i mean i'm not saying it should be like a ever present is this going to affect whether or not you pick domino's pizza versus Chicago style pizza. No, unless you have really strong feelings one way or the other, it, or if it turns out that Domino's is run by 
just the worst person imaginable, then maybe you're like, okay, maybe I don't spend my money with Domino's because that person is an awful person. What I'm really getting at here is that as much as you and I would like to change the world, Mm -hmm. and as much as people who are oppressed would like to change the world, there's only a guarantee. You can only guarantee to change one person. There's only one person you can change for sure. And that person, hopefully that's obvious to people. I feel like it may not. If I don't say it, the only person you can change for sure is yourself. I hate that I have to say that out loud. Look, enough failed relationships have happened because one partner thought they could change their partner. I can make this person better. And then, yeah, that's not. It's a common thought in a relationship status, in a workplace status. But if there are systems that that are put in place and we listen to others' experiences and have the opportunity to change some of those systems, then we should try to do that. If the system is set up to cause a divide. What I'm saying is if you worked at a bank and you saw that it was more difficult or not even you saw somebody else tells you it's more difficult we for don't a certain have, type of person because you know, that's a past thing you know what i mean yeah it's, it might not be as hard overt. for anybody to get a loan at a bank you know what i mean you see what i'm saying like obviously if there are injustices that you are directly you can stand mm-hmm. up and say something obviously that's important but that's my point is that right. if there's an injustice that you see that is influencing where your reality is the things that you influence that's where you should speak up, not in telling other people that they should do it. You see what I'm saying? Because you're yelling at a screen, if that's what you're doing. You're, you are you see what I'm saying? You're talking like people on the internet saying stuff? Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, if you want change for a certain thing and you say it on the internet, you are talking to a screen. Yeah. Not and any- it's like change on the internet is screaming into the void. No one's opinions have changed drastically from, from a 20 word post on the internet. No, I think that's why I'm coming at it from more of an angle of a conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just feel like the most power that all of us have is individual, not in trying to fix the government or take the government down or any of those things. Like it's on an individual basis. If we all strive to be better people individually, what kind of world would that be? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think there's also, we could have societal goals. But who decides those goals? You see what I'm saying? When you get to that point. Who decides? Yeah, I think that's part of that individualness is getting involved in some sort of way so that you try to collectively create solid goals. Because the road to hell is paved with good intentions, you know. But uh, it doesn't mean we should just completely give up. Like somebody has to up. fix somebody has to fix the water in Flint, Michigan. You know what I mean? That's a real goal. By the way, if you still local live, government, but that's, should. That's, but that's my point. If you live in Flint, Michigan right now, you're an idiot. You see what yeah, I'm saying? What if, if you didn't move out if, of Flint, Michigan, you're dumb. Oh, you just you have, have, you can you change have your elderly personal. parents. There's going to be situations. There's going to be situations where it's just not that easy. Like I, if I'm 60 years old and my 83 year old mother is down the road and we're like, she's retired and I'm working at the mill. I don't know that it's that easy. Or if I'm like the janitor at the building downtown and I'm barely making ends meet, then I don't know that just like uprooting myself and the people I care about to another city is that easy. It's not. It freaking sucks. It's terrible. But the only person that 100% has control of their situation is the individual there. And if they know they're being poisoned by their water on a regular basis, that I think at that point you have to take individual responsibility. If you know the government hasn't fixed it already... They're probably not Mm -hmm. going to. You've got to take your own responsibility there, I I would assume. Wouldn't you? But I think there's other ways. It doesn't have to be like all or nothing. I think you can try to fix that situation. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Like that. I get it. If you were in Flint, Michigan right now and your job Mm -hmm. was there. Yep. I imagine you would do everything in your power to find a job somewhere else. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm leaving the door open for the possibility that's not easy for a chunk of people. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. There are probably people that can't easily do it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is there are probably also a good chunk of people that could fairly, not easily, but could leave Mm -hmm. knowing that the water elsewhere is okay or better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There are also things you can do to get clean water 
in yeah. those places. Yeah. And, and I'm sure there's people like using, I'm sure there's, I'm sure the bottle, bottled water sales are through the roof. Yeah. Everybody's got Brita filters on Brita filters. If you're in the house that you grew up in and you fear change, <laughs> there's a mental hurdle on leaving. That could be a And thing. I guess that's my point, right? If you're the kind of person that fears change. That's also, do we just give up on cities when their when their water doesn't work? I'm not just, saying give up on them. Just, Obviously, like, something should have been done by now. But 100%. I'm just saying, if you are that person and you live there, at some point you have to take personal responsibility uh, for your health and be like, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm done. There's plenty of other cities to go to. Yeah, and, I, and maybe that's a shit take. Maybe that's the problem with my take is that maybe it's garbage. But as somebody who's like literally had to decide whether I wanted to spend my last 80 cents on a candy bar or put a half a gallon more of gas in my car Mm -hmm. to get to the next town, sometimes shit sucks. You know what I mean? You just have to do a thing. So the growth of Wanda (laughs) envisions relationship between Civil War and Infinity War. You feel like that's justified? I I really enjoy going going deep on this podcast. But but I feel part of of the problem is like people don't want to listen to going deep or don't want to listen to conflicting views or whatever. And I think that's the point. The point of the conversation is that what's, we can what's have important one. for us to know right now is that nobody's listening. That's true. We don't know what people want to listen to. We haven't given it to them yet. It would Thanks, be nice. friends and family. Yeah. Friends and family. Like, you know, Hey, tr- smash that like button, <laughs> the share button. That would be nice. Oh yeah. The share. Yeah. And with all this, that's <laughs> what I'm getting at. Why is it that people have this tendency to just yell? At a screen. Be- because social media has turned us all into screaming machines. What happened to being able to zoom out a little bit and have these kind of conversations? Like, for real, it's weird. Because so much weird. of it is done through screens and you can just turn it off and not think about that shitty thing that you said. <laughs> like, if you're a shitty person and you say shitty things to people. No, but you- it's people aren't even considering it shitty. Where is this? Uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Doing great. Yeah, she's great. Uda Thunk, a this... non Olsen twin, the younger sister of the Olsen twins. Now they're still billionaires compared to her, but so, still, like so from an is, acting standpoint. This is funny. It's right? like taking an extreme point of view is the problem. Yeah. But we're like right now, we're in the land of hot takes because everybody's like, trying to get eyeballs and views. And, and a take you have, then that's what's going to draw people to it because you're passionate about it or whatever. It's the, uh, if if you're not with me, you're against me. It's that if language. It's Sith language. It's, and it's being used by, it's being used hard. I don't know, man. It's just a weird, the world's getting weird, man. Right? Agreed. I don't know. As far as the Wanda and Vision story, it's all in Infinity War. And then yeah. you get a little bit of really angry Wanda in Endgame and that's it. Yeah, I think but. they're super connected because of that Mind Stone and because she can't read his mind. Mm-hmm. And that makes him somebody that something unique for her and it's mm-hmm. more of a challenge and probably a reason to want to be around him more. Yeah. And that's the beginning of this. That's the beginning of it. And the romantic relationship definitely a weird thing i guess we're getting into that in reality now there's like robots and certain types of toys you can purchase oh <laughs> yeah yeah well, that's been around it's, it's been around for a while yeah but it's going there more and more and i think with you get the movie lars and the real girl no yeah he's, he's, he's yeah i have a girlfriend she's right here and he just brings the sex doll around yeah I never saw it heard it was good and then you got like a movie like her where joaquin phoenix falls in love with his phone's ai haven't seen that. It's a lot of fun, actually. It's not fun. It's not a fun movie. The it's... Oscar Isaac one. What was that one? Oh, Ex Machina? Ex Machina, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have not seen that one. Oh, great, great shit. Yeah, it's one of those where I, it's been on cable a lot lately, and I'm like, ooh, I got to catch this at the beginning. Uh, you got to catch never it. Yeah. organically catch it at the beginning when I have enough time. There was one time where it started, and I was like, yes. And then I realized I have to do something in 30 minutes and this will not work. Just taped it and picked it back up later, but I didn't do that. I just went on about my day and I haven't come back to it since. Yeah. I think that would be a good example of how it can all go terribly wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Her is a sweet movie. It's worth looking at. Okay. Scarlett Johansson plays the AI Uh voice, like the Siri. And then, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix has just like a creeper mustache. That is just so great. So this is established here and a reminder that this film is target our audience is basically teenage kids do we think so for wandavision or for no, infinity war right yeah i think that's it's in that so yeah. it starts to get weird and then it's embraced now in wandavision their, their relationship showing 
such a complex relationship to children. Does this disturb you at all? Nah, not really. I think there's enough like willful suspension of disbelief there to go a pretty long way with something like this. Yeah. Is he a, a robot primarily? Yes. Does that bring in some complications? Sure. But at the same time, like he's, they can be in love. I don't need to know how they, yeah. you know, and he's probably more human than most of us. He's on the yeah. side of life. Yeah. He's, he seems to be like the character that does and executes the side of good, regardless of the cost. Yep. Which is odd, right? So the AI is actually acting in our best interest more mm-hmm. so than humans. And maybe they, that's because they can zoom out. They have a much wider perspective than it's much more like universal yeah now i wonder if vision in the same way that ultron could hide his consciousness in the internet and just copy himself in the internet somewhere and then transfer that consciousness to some other body as he does throughout age of ultron i wonder if vision has that same kind of that would be an interesting way to get vision back without having to break any of the continuity that we know of time travel command v yeah just paste that sucker. Paste. We get a little control V for our for our Windows friends. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be really awesome, actually. There's no reason that couldn't happen, actually, that I know of. Unless you consider his consciousness being too much affiliated with the Mind Stone. So it might be more of a Jarvis than a Right. Vision. It's a great question. I Who wonder knows? if we Who are knows? going to find like, out by the eighth episode of this show it's we don't really even have cliff notes like we don't know where the show is going the, i have no idea watching the trailer basically covered what we've seen today and probably what we'll see in the next episode yeah oh. the trailer basically gave us costumes and and set pieces and jokes yeah but like the next level of things i'm excited about where it's going mm-hmm. these first two episodes nah, maybe not so much but like where it's going and the things they're putting in here and the concepts they're exploring really good about yeah Really excited. Oh yeah. It's I think it's gonna get wild. I think it's gonna get weird. I'm all for it. Oh, please go check the show notes, go listen to the song. Our band name is Dual Paradigm, and the song is Pleased to Meet You. You hear it every show, but if you want to hear the whole song, whole please thing. go check it Again, out on your favorite platform, Spotify, whatever, tunes and whatnot. And iTunes, uh, Apple Musics. Also please share this. You know, do all the things. Like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Or don't. Whatever. You do you. Take a deep breath with me. Here we go. We're living. We are living. Let's do this. It's been fun. Yep. Thank you, guys. And thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jacob. Bye.